Welcome, everybody. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm not that tall. I was standing on a chair. Uh, but welcome, everybody, to another video. Uh, the point today uh, is to learn how to graph a quadratic equation that is in intercept form. And keep in mind, I already have a video about how to find the vertex in intercept form. <laughs> I think I pointed the right direction. Uh, anyways, should be a lot of fun. Should be a good video. I'm looking forward to it. But before we begin, question for you. What's your bright spot? What's your bright spot today? All right. <laughs> My bright spot is the rain. Uh, it's raining pretty strong uh, here today, and uh, I like the rain. This weekend I went hiking, uh, and it rained on me this weekend too. Maybe I should show a picture of that. But I had my son with me, but my son has an umbrella, so he's good. He stayed dry. Me, however. <laughs> All right, let's go get it. Let's do it. So if we're going to graph any quadratic equation, that's going to, you know, they all make parabolas. So we need to know the vertex for sure. Like that's the point we need. We need that center, that vertex. So in this case, vertex is not the characteristic that is easiest to get from intercept form. From intercept form, we get x-intercepts. So here's our game plan. You ready? You ready, Coach Miller? Gonna throw it up there on the whiteboard. Here we go, game plan time. All right, there we go. So our game plan is find the x-intercepts, and we know the vertex has to be in the middle because of the gorgeous, phenomenal, flawless beauty of the parabola. And so we're gonna find the middle, and that's gonna be where the vertex is. You ready? Let's get it. So this is our first equation here. If we're gonna find the x-intercepts, we could use mathematical structure if we want. Like we, we know that when an equation has intercept form, that our p and q values are gonna be where the vertex, where the x-intercepts are located. So in this case, your p value is negative three and your q value is negative seven. And then maybe you, maybe you haven't memorized it or written it as many times as I have, so let me rewrite that original equation for you. Okay, so that was what I was saying, right? So if it's at p, right, you just take that p value and that's your first x-intercept, take the q value, that's your second x-intercept. So here, because we have pluses, then our p and q values must be negative because when you subtract a negative, you add. It's true in math and it's a beautiful analogy in life. When you subtract negativity, you make yourself more positive always, okay? So we go up here and we say, all right, these are our x-intercepts. So our x-intercepts have to be at negative three, zero, and negative seven, zero. Well, let's graph them. Come on, let's do it. You got some graph paper? Okay, so we're gonna go negative three, zero, put a point, negative seven, zero, so four, five, six, seven, put a point. Gorgeous. That means now, we just gotta find the vertex and we know it's gotta be in the middle of those. So if these are different by four, right? If you have to add four to go from here to here, then adding two must get us to the center. So the center, if this is minus seven, has gotta be at minus five, right? So the center is gonna be at x is equal to negative five. So we're gonna take that value and we're gonna plug it back into our equation, negative five, negative five, because a vertex has an x and a y coordinate. It's got two values, so okay, this is the x value, the axis of symmetry. Now we gotta go find that y value. Let's get it. So I'm gonna go from here all the way down to there. We got y is equal to negative two times positive two, which is equal to four. So now we know our vertex is gonna be located. All right, so let's put it on our graph. Let's do this. Uh, I guess I'm graphing with red here today. Okay, so we're gonna go back five, and we are gonna go, oh my gosh, I made a mistake. Mamma mia. Uh, this whole being human thing. <laughs> uh, all right, so it's negative four, it's negative four. 
Yeah, because the parabola's got to point up, so the, the vertex couldn't have been above it. Then it would, it would have to have pointed down. All right, well, let's just uh, let's keep going. We're doing good. We're doing, we doing fine. We're doing fine. All right, so there's the vertex. You could, I don't know if your teacher's fine with just using three points. You could just start draw the parabola, freehand as best you can. But I would recommend putting a couple extra points just to make it prettier. Why not, right? <laughs> Uh, so the, the A value is one, right? The A value is one. So when that happens, I have a poster. That means it's called the parent function. And the parent function always follows the same pattern. It goes over one, up one, over one, up three, over one, up five, over one, up seven. Anytime A is one, we follow that pattern. So I say, Let's follow that pattern. Come on, let's get it. So I'm gonna go over one, up one, and reflect that. Over one, up three, ding, ding, ding. Got my x-intercept. And maybe I'll do over one, up five, just to really make a nice parabola. And now do your best to draw it. It is a beautiful shape. And there we go. Wonderful. Let's try another one. All right, <laughs> let's get, what the hell happened to my jacket? I tell you, I took that off in a hurry. Uh, all right, so I want you to give this one a shot, okay? So hit pause, pause, unpause. Let's get it, yes, yes, me and you, let's get it, let's do it. All right, so you know the strategy, find the x-intercepts, then find the vertex by just getting the middle of those x-intercepts. Let's start with the x-intercepts. So I'm gonna look up here. I can use mathematical structure to say my p-value's gotta be one, my q's gotta be negative five, because it's always the opposite, right? It's always the opposite. And the reason it's the opposite, I know I've said this before, but the reason it's the opposite is because x-intercepts always make y zero. They always make y zero. And the only way to get to zero, if you're multiplying, is to multiply by zero. And so, right, that's why, because if you're adding a positive, then the negative is what gets you to zero. And if you're subtracting, then it's the positive, right? If you're gonna subtract a positive, then a positive number brings you to zero. All right, regardless, we now know where our x-intercepts are. Thank you, intercept form, for being so beautiful. What a wonderful form. Big round of applause for intercept form. <laughs> okay. Aye, aye, aye. I do these videos during my prep. I swear, people, they know there ain't no one in the room. Some people out there probably think I'm crazy. Can you believe that? Can you believe some people probably think I'm crazy? All right, so we got our points, negative five, I'm feeling good, and one. So now we gotta find the middle of these to get to our vertex. So I have to add six, six steps from there to there. So if I go three steps, I've gotta be where the vertex is located. So in this case, if I pull this orange line down, looks like we're at negative two. That's the line of symmetry. That's the x value of the vertex. So let's see. So I know that for sure. I just gotta find the y value. So why don't we just take that negative two and plug it back into our equation. Okay, now, that negative here, I'm gonna just write it as a full-on negative one. That's what I'm gonna decide to do here, okay? So we got negative one, negative, negative one times negative nine gives you positive nine. And we could anticipate that because the, with the A value being negative, we know parabolas point down when A is less than zero, i.e. negative. And it points up when A is greater than zero, 
Uh, why did I write an equal sign? Greater than zero. So let's go to here. Let's finish our vertex is at negative two, nine. So let's go up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Find my red. All right, so you could draw the parabola now, as, you know, as I've said, but let's add some more points. Let's use the fact that where is my poster? That this pattern for the parent function, over one, up one, over one, up three, over one, up five, it works even if it's pointed down, except instead of going up one, you go down one, that's it. So with a being negative one, we're actually got a perfect parent function just pointed down. So let us, let us go get that. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go over one, down one, over one, down three, over one, down five, and I'm back at the, uh, back right here at the x-intercept. All right, so let's mirror those points over the axis of symmetry. Let's try to draw a beautiful graph. Okay. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna do it a little bit better. All right. Well, hey. That's two examples. I think that's enough for today. I can always make another video. There's always another day. Um, anyways, it's nice to see you. Thank you for being here. I admire your tenacity and I hope you succeed. All right, have a beautiful day. Take care of yourself.